What's up, everybody? We can run here, president of Blackstone Labs, and we are at Athletic Factor with head of my call center, Bill Viardo, and Keon the Prodigy Pearson again. And today is back day, so I switched it up and I brought Billy in because he probably got the best back in the office. James Hart, and he is actually also what eight weeks out. He's eight weeks out from his show, so he's in it, grinding hard now. And I wanted to keep bringing people that can really push Keon because he's in the crunch time now. So his energy is low. He still trains like a damn warrior. But I, I do feel that when you're at the state, it's good to bring people in to keep things fresh and moving and exciting. So we're going to go back hard and heavy today. We're going to start out with a little bit of pre exhaust. We're going to do some heavy rows. We're going to answer some classic Ron Fitness supersets and then some isolation at the end. But we're keeping it basic, hard, and intense. And I'll explain why they're doing what they're doing when we're out there, but we're going to get into it. All right, so I always like to start everything with some, some form of pre exhaust. So what we're going to do is, although I always preach the importance of rows, in order to warm everything up, lubricate everything the right way, we're going to do a superset to get everything warmed up and stretched out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a regular overhand lap pull down. So right here on the bed. I actually don't like to use my thumb. Uh, I don't use wraps either, but there's nothing wrong with these. Right? So they're gonna stay pretty up, pretty upright, chest up, and then we're gonna pull back pretty strict, just to the top of our, our chest, then come up to full extension, right? So they're gonna do these for sets of 15. And because we're just trying to warm everything up, we're not gonna be jacking it around to see some guys do it. Now, I'm not gonna say that I, I don't think it's okay to do that, but for the, the purpose of warming everything up, I want them to be pretty strict. So they're gonna get their 15 here, and they're gonna pop right over. A stiff arm, pull down the rope. Then go all the way over, pulling down. You guys have seen me do this plenty of times. It's gonna stretch everything out and get nice, blood flow everywhere into their lats. So they're gonna do three sets like that, then they're actually gonna do three more sets, this is all part of our, our warm up, then they're gonna do three more sets with an underhand grip, elbows in, pulling all the way down like this. Now in this case, the lats do a really, really deep stretch. The farthest range of motion that you're gonna get on a pull down is with an underhand grip. And they're gonna still superset this with the stiff arm rows. So that's actually six total sets. But that's gonna have them all totally warmed up and ready to go for all the heavy stuff that we're gonna do after. And then we're gonna be able to go right into everything after. So you guys can pick your weights, because I have no idea how strong you are. And I'll get out of the way and let you guys know. So you see this form is nice and strict. When, when you're in the beginning of your workout, the best thing to warm yourself up is range of motion for whatever else you're gonna do. Some people go and they run on the treadmill or whatever. That's actually getting your blood going, but it's not really warming you up for the work that you have to do. So this nice strict motion is just getting everything lubricated in here, get blood into his shoulder joint, through his lats, and he's gonna walk right over here, bend all the way over here. And you're just gonna feel the insertion down here, all the way up, and get that squeeze. Now I can feel already his lats are already firing hard with blood. This is what we want.
Big Mom. back. Eight weeks. Mom. Come on. Good. Come on. Good. There you go. Good. 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 So he's doing a very, very strict all the way down to the floor, basically a, almost a rest pause in a way. It's just very, very hard to do it like that. I guess the only down point to that is you're asking the muscle to fire again each time, and so you're, you're going through that, that dead stop firing, whereas when you're not stopping and, and pausing like that, you can get into a rhythm where your body tends to help move the weight along a little bit easier. So they're both very effective ways to do it. They're both different. I would encourage you to try doing it both ways and maybe even incorporate both ways into your workout. It's kind of like when you deadlift, you've got to touch the weight on the floor every time. So you're essentially stopping and starting over again, which makes that starting point so heavy. So it's almost kind of like putting that process of having the muscles to fire like that into the road type exercise. I've seen people do this with barbell rows also. You really wouldn't do it with an underhand barbell row, but I've seen people do it with overhand barbell rows and dumbbell rows as well. You're just asking the muscle to go from a complete stop to fire again, which is very tricky. So try it out. If you're going to do something like that, you're going to want to lower your weight a little bit to get used to it first. Come on. Let's go. Easy shit. Come on, Keanu. Let's go. Elbow drive, come on. There you go. There you go. Good. Nice. Right. So this is his final working set. Obviously, use the goal to try to get 10. And if we're running close and you gotta get a little, a little sloppy to do it, then we're gonna do it. Now, if that's not the case, then I'm gonna tell Tom to put it down. I see him starting to get really sloppy. So we don't wanna get hurt at this point. When you start losing your form, that's when you risk injuries. When you hear me talking a lot about this in, in these videos, it's because I see so many people getting hurt. It's because I got hurt so many times because I just wanted to keep moving with it. So you don't ever wanna sacrifice form for the sake of weight. There's a time to cheat a little bit, but especially not when you're deep into your belt. This is going to be heavy. This is five plates. Here we go. Class up. You go ahead and start it now. Come on. Here we go. Low carbs, too. He's on his low carbs. Just like Christopher Luke with the infamous left over. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on, last up you. Go out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. There you go. Good. So they get it on social media. You guys have seen me do this in videos before, so my favorite way to do any kind of hammer strength exercise for back is you've got to find a machine that has this particular low row, which is designed to be an underhand low row. Okay, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the seat a little normally, uh, normally for the underhand row, you're gonna pull in low to your waist, right? So you're actually gonna set this, this pad a little bit lower. You're gonna sit at the end of the seat and lean in like this. Right? And you're gonna grab it with an overhand grip like this. And when you pull, you're gonna be pulling back like this instead of doing the underhand motion. And by doing this, you're gonna drag your elbows against your body so you want your elbows going out. You guys have seen me do this in here with the guys before. 
By doing it from this range of motion at this angle, you're actually going to feel it in the middle of your back in a very, very unique way. It's a tricky spot of the body to hit. So this is not something that you want to go too heavy on. You just want to concentrate on your right now. So we're going to be shooting for like 10 to 12 reps on this. Then we're going to pop over here. We're just going to loosen everything back up again. We're going to go into the upper hand. So, we're going to knee in here. Same thing, they're going for like 10 to 12 reps. With the other hand pulled out. Open everything back up again. And then we're going to pop over to the regular low row. The one thing you like the regular low row is I actually want the seat to be fairly high. We're going to do this. The row, I want them actually holding it pretty low. The different positioning when you hold it is actually going to change the way the muscle contracts considerably. Because a lot of people like to hold it up top like this because it's kind of easier, like that. So when you're holding it really low like this, you have to engage your lower lats a lot more. It's a lot trickier. So we're going for around 10 to 12 reps on all of these. So these weights are not light, especially considering how much they did. So we'll kind of gauge it from here because we still got to run through this three times. Um, but you, you want to be pushing yourself hard on these, you just don't want to get sloppy with the form. So, we're going to start right here. Good. Pull those elbows close to your body, just straight back. Good. Come on. Good. Good. You'll film him from the back on most of these. Good. Give me three more. This is very good form. Two more. Good, now come over here. Good. 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 Come on. One more. Good. Come on. Let's go. Pull. There you go. Come on. Pull. Come on. Start getting some rhythm with it. You can, you can just pull the rhythm now. Let's go. Come on. Two minutes rest in between these giant sets. When you do these giant sets like this, good long rest in between. Try to be rhythmic with these. Nice trick, just pull it back. Come on. There you go. Come on. Good. Good. Feel it, baby. Good. Feel it, baby. Come on. Come on. Pull it back. Pull it back. Keep going. Pull it back. One. Two more. Pull it back. Come on. One more. I change the weight on the middle exercise. They're gonna be fresh on this no matter what, so I'm okay with that. This middle exercise is actually really important because this is opening everything back up again, and I don't want the weight to be so heavy where they can't get their proper range of motion on, and it's just moving weight. And they're gonna come over here. Here's where I'm actually okay with them getting a little lax with their form, because I'm just trying to force more and more blood into there. Come on, pull hard. Yeah. Ah. Good job. You're 
we're almost done. Now what we're doing is, I call this, putting the finishing touches on, right? So both of them are into their contest prep. Detail is everything. So this exercise is a great, great exercise for detail. And I love this exercise. I'm somebody that has two blown out shoulders. And although they say this, this exercise is dangerous for shoulders, I still incorporate this in because it's such an effective exercise. We're gonna do behind the neck lat pull downs. Now, one thing that I love about behind the neck lat pull downs is it gives you a very unique contraction in your upper back. And I've also found that if you have a shoulder injury, you can actually make this a little easier on the joint by simply sitting backwards in the machine. So what I do, I'm gonna lower the weight a lot more than these guys, is I position my hands about where they would be when I'm hitting my back double bicep pose. So if here's my back double bicep pose, that's where I hold my hands on the bar. So, get in here. Now, you can absolutely play around with a closer or wider grip. You're just changing the stress of the muscle because of the range of motion. But for me, basically, if here's my back double bicep pose, that's where I'm gonna grab. And I sit in here. I kind of anchor my feet back, so I'm not going to swing. Now the start of this motion, when you start a normal lap pull down, your scapula are out, and you're essentially pulling down with your elbows. Well, the difference between behind the neck is you're actually going to kind of rotate your shoulders and scapula back. You notice how I just did that? Obviously, I have a hoodie on, so it's a little trickier to see, but I'm rotating back my whole entire shoulder joint, and now I'm pulling straight down, essentially to the back of my head. So, I see people that are very flexible, they'll pull all the way down to their shoulders, unnecessary, unnecessary. You're not really contracting the muscle anymore. Women, you, you guys are always more flexible than us. You can probably do that, but it really isn't necessary. All you have to do is pull down to the back of the head, right in the middle of your back of your head. And you want to do this in a nice controlled rhythm where you're squeezing those muscles, just like when you do your back double bot pose. So when you get here, squeeze real hard, come up right before you're at full extension, come back down again. I don't like to go to full extension on this because you're actually re relieving everything on this. Although I do do that on a regular lap pull down all the time. This is all about getting blood in, squeezing it, right when it's about to be relaxed, coming back down, squeezing it again. This is a strict one, and we're gonna do sets of 15. We're gonna do four sets. That way five? I think this is maybe easy for you, but you're pretty tired. So do this, if you want to do this way, wait first, make sure you're going this way. You can go nice and slow. Deep back. Hold so right there. Right before full tension, come back down. Squeeze hard. Good. Squeeze hard. There you go. Good. 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 We're squeezing everything in here. Come back here with the camera, you'll see there's a lot going on back here. There you go. Good. Keep going. We got five more. Squeeze in here a lot, four more. You can even see striations coming out in his traps now. One more. Good job. Good. I love, I love this exercise. It's especially as you get closer and closer to the show, you want to help bring all that detail out. It's a great isolation exercise. It's easy to cheat with a lot of other muscles on right over the See how strict this is. Everything has to work. Come on, baby. Good. I'll tell you what, that's very, very, he's got very mobile scapula. I'm very envious. <laughs> that's a very healthy shoulder joint right there. You can see how he can externally rotate so efficiently. That's good. Take care of your shoulder joints, guys. Take it from me. Very good. Let's go. I'll get up more. 
Stage three. coming out through here. So we're working a lot, basically, in this area right here, squeezing all his muscles. Good. Good. Come on. Oh, come on, make me work. Come on, push. Come on, squeeze. There you go. today, um, but with these cars, we'll turn back on. We're not going to stop training because of that. These guys got to power through. So hopefully, um, I can explain this in a way where you guys get it. This is not rocket science. What we're doing now, we're finishing up with a seated pulley row. But what we're going to do is we're going to use a rope attachment. You guys have seen me use these in videos before because you can get a farther range of motion. Now, what I'm going to have them do is the first set. We're going to go for about 10 reps, pretty heavy, and I'm okay with the form not being perfect on this. Okay. So they're gonna do their 10 reps, pulling back as far as we can, full extension, pulling back as far as we can, pulling the elbows apart. Then, when they finish that 10 heavy reps, you're gonna drop the weight down, all right? From there, I want it to be ultra strict, where they're basically just coming from full extension to contraction, full extension to contraction. Now, you'll see what people often do is they'll stretch. I don't want that. On the first set of 10, I don't care if they're getting tricky with it, but once we're into this next set, of burning it out, I want it to be very strict. So, full extension, full contraction. Full extension, full contraction. And we need to test everything here because we're gonna use that power and that rhythm to really, really get a lot of blood going in. And then right when they start to get tired, getting into that isolation, it's gonna be all about squeezing in the proper form of helping push all this blood into that muscle. As I always say, there's so much blood in there, it really has no choice but to grow. So that's, that's the whole mindset of what we're doing now. Three sets. We're gonna, we're gonna do drop sets on all three, heavy, and then real strict. And I do. Good. Good. Come on, pull back hard. Good. One more. Good. Look down. Now, real strict on the edge, okay? No, no. No swaying, just arms out, pull back. Your chest real hot. There you go. Pull those elbows a little closer to your body. There you go. Try to pull them back a little farther. There you go. Squeeze right here in my hand. Is. Good. Squeeze. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. More. Come on, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. A couple more. Two more. One more. Come on. Good. There you go. Come on. Nice. Good. Keep going back. Good. That's easy for you. Good. 
Counting when we got to 20. Let's go, big boy. You eight weeks out. Come on. Show me something. Let's go. Good. Pull these hard and then pull, pull it real strict after. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Pull. 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 Come on. Very strict. Now we go super, super strict. Come on. Go, baby. Nice and upright. And squeeze. Good. Squeeze. Come on, squeeze this shit. Squeeze. Yep, squeeze and pain. Squeeze. There we go. Good. Come on. Good. Nice. Keep going. Come on. Come on. Let's go. That chest nice and high. Let's go. There you go. Keep squeezing these out. Come on. Good. Good. Come on, keep driving. Good. Come on. Keep driving. Let's go. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. Do four ah. more. Come on. Just keep grinding. Keep more. You got ten more. There you go. Let's go. Come on. Good. Keep last of the day, bro. Keep pull last it. Last of the day. Come on. Come on. Good. You got a fucking show to win. Let's go. Good. There you go. Oh. Nice. Man, he's nice. Hard for that, baby. There you go. That's how it works. Yeah, it's failure right there. There you go. Good fucking job. Good workout, guys. So we did all that, by the way. Even though I couldn't see the clocks because the lights were off, I did happen to look where we started. We did all that in an hour. That's two guys. So if you're by yourself, you probably do it in 45 minutes. That's how you should be training all the time. Now, when you're in your off season, if you're doing 
a little bit more rest in between your sets. What's gonna happen is you're gonna be stronger, and that's totally fine. And it's not gonna really excite you back, but when you're in a caloric deficit, and you're burning all these calories, and you're doing cardio, and you're doing all these other things, you do not need to be in the gym for more than 45 minutes. What happens after that, and if anybody that wants to argue with me on this, we can definitely argue. After that, it becomes counterproductive. Your body starts producing cortisol, things start breaking down. I have, I have done it every way that you can think of. I've done it long, I've done it quick, I've, try, I've tried it all. But no matter what you do, no matter what pace you go at, if you're moving at an, a, a, a pace where your metabolism is up, you're burning calories, you're feeling good, no one that's in a caloric deficit can possibly keep getting benefit after an hour. I just refuse to believe it. What happens after that is it's ego or you love training, you love training, but you're not benefiting yourself anymore after that. There's definitely studies that support it. I, I think if you pay attention to yourself, you'll feel that after about 45 to 60 minutes on the high end, your pump does not get any better. Anything it starts getting worse, and you're just wasting your time at that point. So, I'm not saying to just stop yourself at 45 minutes because you, you, you hit the stopwatch and you did what you're supposed to do, but start paying attention to how you feel and you'll, you'll feel these things. Now, I've been training with Keon long enough to know that he'll just keep going, but it becomes counterproductive at that point. And Billy wants to be the best he's going to be, so he's going to probably want to do more as well. When we're younger, we always want to do more. We always think more is better, but I've learned now through all these years of beating the crap out of myself that you want to maximize the time that you're there the right way, the most efficient way, the most intelligent way, because I'll tell you this, this is my last statement that, that I made. I used to train where I believed that I could train harder than anybody. And that's cool. You know, that's people will give you respect for that, but that doesn't mean that you're gonna be better than everybody. And if anything, the guys that have figured out how to be smarter than everybody, like Jay Cutler is the person that I always use as an example, they keep getting better and they have longevity. Because it's about being efficient and calculated with what you do, not just trying to outwork everybody. Some people can just work real, real hard. It doesn't mean that they're going to be the best. So, you guys, you guys have anything you want to say? Yeah, that's it. Excellent. That was an awesome workout, man. Yeah. 17 days for me. How many weeks out? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah, excellent workout. This is the second back workout I've gone through with PJ, and uh, each time, man, I'm wrecked out. Trying to think what we did. Well, where were we last time? We were at oh, Busy by North. North. Another gym with very, very good equipment. So what I like to do is on body parts that are larger, like back, chest, legs, for instance, I try to find these gyms that have all this, look at all this awesome equipment they have here. There's so many extra things that you can do to spice your workouts up. Now. You can do arms or shoulders anywhere. You can do laterals and, and curls anywhere. But I encourage you guys to try all these different machines in different gyms. Try the T-bar machines, try the different hammer strength. Dr. Kristen love hammer strength. But you can come up, you can figure out for you, for your body, what you think you feel the most. When I get people in, I try to show them different stuff each time and try to put it together in a way that makes sense for them and for what their goals are to stimulate everything. Uh, but I think that to have a really good back, you gotta do most of the rows. I think that everybody, Lee Haney used to say that, Ronnie Cohen says it. You find the pull exercises, the, the stretching exercises to kind of keep opening everything up, but just row, guys. Do lots and lots of rows. Maybe you'll be like these guys. But for both of these guys, so, keep this arm pulled in so there's no space. Yeah. Go down in the Yeah. So you can see on my back? arm is now pushing in like this. Right. So it's gonna keep everything looking real, real thick in here. What happens is when you're out, no matter where your arm position is, even if it feels more comfortable, when they see those spaces, it actually, when you're watching from the judge's spot, it makes it look thinner. Right. So the less spaces, the better. There you go. Just pull it right into yourself, hard. And you're gonna to wanna to pull this back. Your leg position is actually good. You do too, bro. <laughs> yeah, so just, I always start from the floor up. So your back leg, your plant leg should be angled a little bit away. So you're gonna tuck this in here like this. You always wanna be using your body. Right, the smash from the Same thing with your upper body. So you're gonna push this in like this, right? So now I have my, my back leg pushing in. So I, it's gonna fire all this for me. I don't even have to really worry about flexing it other than, other than my calf. Right. Now with, with your upper body, you're pulling this arm against your body, just like when you do a row, 
but use this hand to pull everything in real, real tight so there's less space. It's not, it's gonna look different on me because I don't have the shoulders right. left anymore. But, see how there's no space here? Right. I'm pulling in, in, in tight. There you go. Okay, I get it now. Your side chest. There you go. Sometimes you stand up a little bit too tall on your side. Yeah, I'll say you sit this. Sit into a little bit so now all these fibers start firing up. And remember, just like front squat, you're pushing this like this way. Yep. There you go. See what happened when you did that? When you do it, then you just lost it again. So start over. Watch what happens when you sit into it and push. Push this leg in. Now all this comes out. You gotta stay on that so that stays out. See, as you start to stand up and you start losing it, it's very, very important. Well, what will help you also is with your back leg. So say this is the line on the floor where you guys are going to need to stand. Yep. So if you were to right straight on it, it would be like this. Angle it back just a little bit. My so left foot. Okay, left foot. So like, let's say this okay. is just perfectly straight. Twist it back a little bit. Push this leg into it hard, and then you're you're actually turning your hips. So when you turn your hips, it's going to push all this out, right? And you get all that that detail out. I know it's in there because I'm holding fat and look at all the detail that I have. So there you go. Good. Now stay on it. Upper body is you're, you're doing the upper body good. This is better now. You're just gonna keep practicing that. We'll practice that, that more anyway. When you go upright, you're losing that line and you're making your legs look skinnier. There you go, stay on it like that. Good. Pull your out. There you go. Very good. Present this leg, right? So see how this leg is back a little bit now? 
come down like this where you're not totally straight but you are for the most part and make it more about your leg here because once you're all the way in shape your abs yeah. are going to look good but yeah. if there's any like critique on your physique it's probably more more your midsection but your legs are pretty good take take the attention and put it on on your leg so when you're totally straight with your legs open like this it's taking away from your body if anything it, 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 it takes away from the taper on, on both angles even though you have good shoulders so use the fact that you have broad shoulders and good legs to your advantage so your your, your positioning on these is going to be more like this so you're actually going to show a lot more with this leg and draw the attention to this leg and then come into it like that. It's a little bit more classic looking pose, but for your physique, you're going to get a lot more out of it. So, dude, your legs look way bigger as soon as you did that. As soon as you did that, it made your legs in this pose look dramatically bigger. You have to do it like that. It's a huge difference. You have too much opening with it that way. Now you can do more with this leg. Because you have really good quads. So now you just you made that pose about your quads now. Right. Do yours again. With you, you just have to remember to always lock yours out at the end because you have so many crazy striations that you gotta show it. Now lock it and hold it. Lock it like it hold it, good. Let me see the other one now. It's crazy that you did legs that hard on Monday and you still have legs that look like that. Right. Inflammation right now. I feel it all built up now. <laughs> Let me see this one because you had some serious shit going on in this one. That's fucking crazy. Very good. Good. You use your belts are awesome. Let me see all of yours, to be honest. Do it, do it. Hand so your hands clasped is your not your best one. But I want to see one hand. I want to see one hand here and one hand here. And then I'll look at your crab and I'll go back back for it. Here? Yep. Okay. Here, like that. No, but, this way yep. or this way? No, the other way. Yep. And flex your chest real hard. And then do like a one-arm crab on, on on that side. That's actually a pretty good pose. So this is, in my opinion, this is better than both of your hands and your hips. You just gotta play with your leg a little bit and hit that leg too, though. Just lock your leg now. See, I would have fun with that one in that shot. So now, now, move over a little bit. Twist to like going straight. Move over a little bit because you're. I'm losing you with this black thing right now. Do a hand clasp right in front of you, like Kevin Lebroni said. Yep. Let me see that one. Do your crab now. <laughs> Do it again. Do it a little slower. Go through it a little bit slower this time. Crab. Yep. That one's better when you take your time going through it. I think with all of them though, I honestly think that your the one hand version that you were doing with the angle looks the best because it's it's more classic. And what happens with you is you're kind of like you're almost boxing yourself up a little bit. So when you do your when you do your crab and you're coming like way in like this, even though you're bringing everything out here, you're kind of like making yourself smaller, smaller, smaller. Whereas like with this one, when you're staying upright like that, you're actually making yourself look raw up here. I would use that. In, 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 in like your 45 second or, or, or your, your, your routine, I would actually do that one on one. That's actually a really, really nice pose for you. Would you agree? That's a good shot. Absolutely. From, of all of them, if he was going to add one in, I think it's a good shot. You just got to get your leg going a little bit more. Um, let me see your um, back little bye again. No, it's got so much blood.